Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to discuss about cystic lesions of orbit. First, let us discuss about dacryops. Dacryops is bilateral cyst of lacrimal gland and they develop from a dilated, obstructed duct of lacrimal gland. They present as round cystic lesion which protrudes into superior fornix from palpable lobe of lacrimal gland. This picture shows dacryops. Dacryops can be associated with inflammation and the treatment of dacryops is by excision or marsupialization with histopathological analysis. Now let us discuss about dermoid cyst. A dermoid cyst is basically a choristoma that is it is a mass of histologically normal tissue in an abnormal location. Dermoid cyst develops because of displacement of ectoderm to a subcutaneous location along embryonic lines of closure. A dermoid cyst is lined by keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. It has a fibrous wall and it contains dermal appendages like sweat glands, sebaceous glands and hair follicles. Remember, epidermoid cysts do not contain adnexal structures. Dermoid cysts can be divided into superficial dermoid cysts and deep dermoid cysts. Superficial dermoid cyst is located anterior to orbital septum whereas deep dermoid cyst is located posterior to it. Now let us discuss about the symptoms of dermoid cyst. Superficial orbital dermoid cyst presents in infancy with a painless nodule. It is usually present in the supratemporal part of the orbit as you can see in this picture. Coming to deep dermoid cyst, it presents in adolescence with a gradually increasing protruding eye or it can present acutely with an inflamed orbit due to rupture. Now let us discuss about the signs of dermoid cyst. In case of superficial dermoid cyst, there will be a firm, round, smooth, non-tender mass which is usually 1 to 2 cm in diameter. Superficial dermoid cyst will be mobile under the skin but usually it is tethered to adjacent periosteum. Its posterior margins are easily palpable denoting a lack of deeper origin or extension. Coming to deep dermoid cyst, the signs include proptosis, dystopia or a mass lesion with indistinct posterior margins. This picture shows a case of deep dermoid cyst. As you can see, the patient presents with dystopia. Coming to investigations done for a case of dermoid cyst, we can do CT scan. In case of superficial dermoid cyst, imaging will show a well circumscribed heterogeneous cystic lesion as you can see in this picture. Whereas in case of deep dermoid cyst, there will be well circumscribed lesion as you can see in this picture. Coming to treatment of dermoid cyst, small lesions can be observed. When there is associated inflammation, we can give oral steroids. The treatment of choice for both superficial and deep dermoid cyst is excision in toto. Remember, we should not rupture the lesion because if there is rupture, there will be leaking of keratin into surrounding tissue leading to severe granulomatous inflammation. This picture shows a superficial dermoid cyst and this picture shows excised specimen of the same. Now let us discuss about sinus mucosal. It occurs when drainage of normal paranasal sinus secretions is obstructed due to infection, allergy, trauma, tumor or congenital narrowing. This will cause a slowly expanding cystic accumulation of mucoid secretions and epithelial debris. This gradually erodes bony walls of sinus leading to symptoms by encroachment upon surrounding tissues. Orbital invasion occurs usually from a frontal or ethmoidal mucosal. Coming to the presentation of a case of sinus mucosal, it usually occurs in adults. The patient can present with proptosis or dystopia, diplopia or epiphora. This picture shows a case of Ethmoidal sinus mucosal presenting with dystopia. Mucobiosal is when there is secondary infection of a mucosal. Such cases present with pain. Coming to the investigation, we can do a CT scan. CT scan will show soft tissue mass with thinning or erosion of bony walls of sinus as you can see in this picture. The treatment of sinus mucosal is by complete excision. Coming to encephalocele, it is formed by herniation of intracranial contents through congenital defect of base of skull. In case of meningocele, only dura is involved, whereas in case of meningoencephalocele, it also contains brain tissue. Coming to the presentation of a case of encephalocele, it usually presents in infancy. In case of anterior orbital encephalocele, there will be involvement of supramedial part of orbit and this displaces the globe forwards and laterally as you can see in this picture. Coming to posterior orbital encephalocele, which are usually seen in cases of neurofibromatosis type 1. They displace the globe forwards and downwards as you can see in this picture. The displacement increases on straining or crying and may be reduced by manual pressure. 
there will be pulsating proptosis because of the communication with subarachnoid space. CT scan will show bony defect responsible for herniation as you can see in this picture. Thank you.